Alright, so after a good amount of time using the new Realme 10 smartphone, I'm finally ready to give you my full review. This is the latest number series offering from Realme and the first from its Realme 10 lineup. This one is powered by a MediaTek Helio G99 processor with a Mali G57 MC2 graphics, 8GB of RAM, and for our variant right here, we have 256GB of internal storage. It also features a 6.4-inch Super AMOLED display with up to 90Hz refresh rate, 5000 mAh of battery with 33W Super VOOC charging, 15 megapixel color AI camera with a 16 megapixel selfie camera and features a louder than usual speaker with up to 200% volume. In my honest opinion, this is an overall okay smartphone but with some notable caveats. What are those? Let's find out. So let's get into it. I've already shared with you a dedicated unboxing video for the Realme 10 which you can watch here. But essentially inside the box we have a couple of paperwork, a free jelly case, a SIM ejector pin, the Realme 10 smartphone itself, the 33W Super VOOC charger, and a USB Type-A to Type-C charging cable. Now at first look and touch, the Realme 10 looks quite slim and lightweight at around 7.95mm and 179g respectively and features a quite different shape than I'm used to from the number series phones. More on that later. Now in front again we have the 6.4 inch Super AMOLED display, the 16 megapixel selfie camera, the subtle earpiece, and a pre-applied screen protector. The bezels are relatively thin around the sides with a rather thick bottom bezel. Looking at the left side, we have the SIM card tray that supports dual nano SIM cards and the micro SD card slot that supports up to 1TB. On the other side, we have both the volume rocker and the power button that also doubles as a fingerprint sensor. Up top, we just have the secondary microphone and all the way at the bottom, we have the single bottom firing speaker, the USB Type-C port, the primary microphone, and the 3.5mm headphone jack. Now looking at the back, we have a glossy plastic surface with this sort of glittery design with light streaks that varies depending on the angle and the lighting. This is the Clash White variant which I think hides the fingerprints better than the Rush Black variant. Of course, we have the Realme logo here on the lower left corner and the dual camera setup here on the upper left with a small flash. Alright, so with the unboxing and parts overview out of the way, let me share with you the things that I like and didn't like about the new Realme 10. Let's start with the display. Again, the Realme 10 features a 6.4-inch Super AMOLED screen with up to 90Hz refresh rate. The brightness levels I would say is okay, enough for most cases, even outdoors, and you can go all the way down as well if necessary. And with the Super AMOLED panel, the colors are quite vibrant, the blacks are really deep with good contrast levels and with relatively decent viewing angles as well. The 90Hz refresh rate on the smartphone is in my opinion good enough if you consider the capability of the hardware inside, especially for gaming as you'll see later. So this is a good middle ground in relation to the possible cost if they make this even faster. Honestly, I don't have any major complaints about the display and I think it is one of the strong points of the smartphone. As for the speaker, it is kind of a mixed bag for me. For starters, we only have a single downward firing speaker that although can go up to 200% volume thanks to the Ultra Boom feature, is still lacking compared to a dual steer speaker. However, it can get really loud as you will hear in this quick example. Peripherals related reviews, something that I've been wanting to accomplish on a consistent basis for a very long time now. So if this is something you're interested in, make sure to subscribe. In today's video, we're going to do a quick unboxing and overview of the new Realme 10 smartphone. Now, the fingerprint on the power button is highly appreciated but it's also okay in terms of performance. It is more reliable compared to an in-display fingerprint reader, but honestly, isn't much faster than I would hope for. Now, in terms of the user interface, the Realme 10 features the Realme UI version 3.0 based on Android 12, and for the most part, is quite clean, lightweight, and smooth. Although, as I pointed out on the unboxing video, has more pre-installed bloatwares than I am familiar with from their previous smartphones. Again, not a big deal since you can easily uninstall them. Sometimes I get some slight hiccups when launching the app drawer, but I think it was just when it's populating the recently used apps. Other than that, a fairly smooth experience. Now, one notable feature inside the settings is the ability to increase the RAM by taking advantage of some of the available internal storage. It might not be as fast, but at least we have this as an option. Now, moving over to performance, the Realme 10 powered by a MediaTek Helio G99 with a Mali G57 MC2 graphics is good enough for most day-to-day -day tasks browsing through the user interface, social media apps, media consumption, photography, productivity, and similar light tasks. It scored 396,429 in 2.2, which is significantly higher compared to its predecessor. 
Now, without wasting too much of your time, here are all the benchmarks results that I got from the Realme 10 so that you can compare it with your current smartphone or the smartphone that you are targeting to purchase. However, on the other side of things, while the performance is decent enough for most tasks, if you're planning on getting this with mobile gaming in mind, you must set a proper expectation because as per my experience, on most of the games I've tried, especially those who are high graphics intensive games, I had to adjust the settings to low just to be able to get a smoother frame rate and in most cases, I only get around 30 to 45 FPS. This is why I mentioned earlier that the 90Hz refresh rate is good enough and probably more than what the smartphone is capable of for gaming. For less graphics intensive games, the Realme 10 is good enough. Now what the smartphone has going for is in terms of battery life. With the 5000 mAh of battery, this can easily last the entire day and as per my testing using the PC Mark Work 3.0 battery life benchmark, it lasted around 9 hours and 42 minutes. And with the 33W SuperVoog charging, I was able to charge this from 10% to 100% in just 1 hour and 21 minutes. Alright, now let's talk about the camera. The 50 megapixel color AI camera on the Realme 10 is okay. Perfectly fine for most cases, especially with a good amount of light. However, I can get past the fact that it doesn't have an ultra wide lens or any other useful lens for that matter, since the second lens is just a black and white lens. I feel like the camera system on this is a downgrade use case wise in comparison to its predecessor which has at least 3 to 4 cameras. For someone who is always considering the camera system on a smartphone, this is honestly a deal breaker for me. Sorry real me, that's just a fact. Ultra wide is a must for me to be honest. Other than that, the photos the smartphone can deliver is really good with vibrant colors, decent contrast, sharpness and details although the sharpening is a little bit too much for my liking as well. Skin tones are good, exposure is pretty decent although not a lot of dynamic range but still pretty decent. The selfies are good enough as well, very flattering even on its default settings with more optional features like retouch and filters. The artificial bokeh or background separation is good enough as well but still quite unnatural. Overall, for casual snaps and social media posting, this should pass for most people. Kuya is playing with a balloon? Huh? Oh, oh. <laughs> careful, careful. Nanggigigil siya eh. Sobra excitement niya eh. Go to daddy. Gio. Bilis mo mami. Go to daddy. Go to daddy! <laughs> I love you! And lastly, in terms of design and extraction, the Realme 10 features a more blocky shape and form factor compared to the curvy design of its predecessors. It might be good or bad depending on your preference. For me, it doesn't matter too much since I'm used to this kind of feel from other smartphones that I've been using for a while now. Overall, to conclude, the Realme 10 has its own pros and cons and there's no sugar coating that some of it are a deal breaker for some, especially the camera system. While the 50 megapixel AI camera is good enough, the lack of ultra wide camera is such a bummer. The overall performance is also pretty decent, especially when it comes to day to day tasks and productivity, but it's a bit lacking when it comes to gaming, specifically on high graphics intensive games. The design and construction is entirely subjective. Some may prefer the usual curvy design we've known for from the Realme Number series, but some could also fancy this new blocky design. The display, in my honest opinion, is quite outstanding and one of its strong points partnered with the louder than usual speaker, albeit just a single downward firing one. The battery life is also one of its pros with essentially an all-day endurance. Now before we end, let me just remind you that this is the Realme 10, not the Realme 10 Pro or Pro Plus or whatever they're planning to release next. So take that into consideration for your comparison. All in all, it's still up to you if you consider this as a better option compared to others or even compared to its predecessor. Let me know in the comments below what you think. And there you have it guys, thank you for watching. Just a quick disclaimer, Realme provided this smartphone as a review sample so that I can share with you my thoughts earlier than I normally would but they didn't have any say on this review and they will see this at the same time as you. You can get this using the link below once it's available. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you appreciate this video and see you next time. Have a great day guys, you're awesome.